Hey, this is Mike from Run Testers, and there's our multi-tester review of the Hocker Skyward X. So here's the rundown of those key Hocker Skyward X specs. The Skyward X is a new line for Hocker, and it's priced at £185 in the UK and $225 in the US. Weight-wise, it comes in at 300 grams in a UK men's size 8. It has a 5mm drop with a stack height of 48mm at the heel and 43mm at the forefoot. The upper is a flat knit one that's designed to offer a sock-like fit. The midsole features a big stack of PIBA with Hocker's EVA-based supercritical foam combining with Hocker's signature Meta Rocker to help provide a smooth and stable ride. Nestled inside that dual density midsole lies a carbon plate to provide some punch in this aspiring max cushion super trainer. Down below you'll find a high abrasion rubber outsole to make sure the Skyward X is fit to soak up plenty of long runs. So in terms of fit, I've had my Skyward X in a UK size 8. That's my typical running shoe size. That is typically the shoe size that I go for in hocker shoes and generally works for me. Now, what I would say about the Skyward X is that it is not typically hocker in the sense that generally most of its shoes are pretty narrow fitting. I've got pretty skinny feet, so generally that works for me. On this shoe, it's definitely a little more accommodating. I think the upper... Um, the material here you're getting does dictate it being a little bit more accommodating. It's definitely pretty spacious up front in the toes. Felt very happy in terms of being a shoe that I want to run long in and won't feel too cramped up front there. And then when you go back into the midfoot, it still kind of maintains that kind of wider, more accommodating fit. And it may mean that you might need to work to make sure you get a good lockdown with these laces and on this kind of pretty padded tongue again to kind of emphasize that kind of comfier fit that you're getting here in general in this upper um in terms of the hill collar nothing kind of you know it's not over excessive in terms of that padding um it's kind of nice and easy to kind of take off when you're done running it as well no term nothing in terms of kind of um heel rub you know any lockdown issues there as well so for me going true to size the shoe has been absolutely fine as i said it's pretty roomy and accommodating particularly at the midfoot and the forefoot of the shoe and if you like the idea of a hocker shoe that is a little bit more spacious this is going to be a shoe I think that's going to appeal. For me, going through the size has been absolutely fine. So I found that the Skyward X fit me well in my normal running shoe size. I generally get on pretty well with Hocker shoes when it comes to the sizing. I am a UK 9, but a small UK 9, so the fact that they convert to a US 9.5 rather than a US 10 like some brands usually means I get a pretty good fit. I have enough room in the toe box. I also have a narrow foot, so again, usually get on with Hoka shoes, but although I don't think this is the narrowest shoe, it certainly seems a bit wider than stuff like the uh, Mac X. I had a good hold around the heel and midfoot, held in place nicely at the back of the shoe. There's a bit more going on with the tab at the back here than with other Hoka shoes. I always find that Hoka shoes don't irritate my Achilles at all normally but a little bit more going on with this one so I'm not such a big fan of how high it is but in general the fit was very good for me in my normal running shoe size. Now in testing I ran in my regular Hoka shoe size which is a UK eight and a half and I think these follow the pretty standard Hoka blueprint they're very snug perhaps bordering on the tight but there's excellent midfoot lockdown there's really good heel hold I had no problems there at all as ever they're quite narrow at the back of the toe box and there's not a huge amount of wiggle room further up into the toe box itself if you're familiar with the Hoka fit then I'd say this is really just more of the same. I'd say I just about got away with going true to size in these, but I think some people might benefit from going half a size up if you like it a bit more roomy. If there's a wide version and you've got wider or higher volume feet, then I think that'd be worth the look too. So I've done over 60K in the Skyward X now, and I've really tried to focus my running time on where I think this shoe is best designed for, or where Pocker thinks you know, you're gonna be using this shoe. So I think first and foremost, it's a shoe that you're going to want to do long runs in so that's what i've really kind of focused on um, my first run was a 20 mile run kind of a sunday long marathon training run at kind of around eight minute mile pace slightly just over dropped it down to 720 730 minute mile pace during that run as well too now my biggest concern was the weight of this shoe i think that's in general with max cushion super trainer shoes you know are you going to feel that weight now, I've been using the on Cloud Monster Hyper recently. I've used the Saucony Kavara Pro, things like New Balance SC Trainer V2. And I think those all kind of sit in that kind of category of the same category that I think the Skyward X belongs to, like a Max Cushion Super Trainer um, style shoe. And I think in terms of that weight, I don't think it's as noticeable when you're running in this shoe. It never felt clumpy or, you know, hard work to run in this shoe and I think that's a real key thing for me that's the first thing I think the positive for me you don't feel that weight in the same way that I think you do in some of those other shoes I mentioned 
And then I think what you're getting in the midsole here, which I think enables this shoe to be a shoe that you can run a bit quicker in it. Do tempo runs, can run a little bit faster in your kind of longer run sessions as well. Um, speed work, maybe not. I think namely the weight is not gonna really lend itself to that, but I do think you can run a little bit quicker in this shoe. When I did a kind of 10K run at kind of 720, kind of 710, dropped it a little bit quicker, I didn't feel like it was uncomfortable to do that. And I said, you're, the key thing for me is the combination of what you're getting in the midsole, you know, having that kind of big layer of kind of PBA, which is there to give you that kind of soft feeling, but not overly plush, I don't think, on those long runs. But then you've got that super critical foam from the Max 6, um, for example. You've got that carbon plate in there as well too. So you're getting an energy, you know, kind of energy, a nice lively ride, that meta rocker that kind of gets you quickly from heel to toe, but it's stable as well. You know, that EVA kind of super critical foam is creating a kind of foundation that makes sure that it reigns in a little bit, but it's still got that enjoyment in that ride as well. It's smooth, it feels stable, but ultimately it feels enjoyable to run in the shoe and to run a little bit quicker in it. I think that was a real important thing for me particularly on that kind of 10k run I did and then the last run I did I think was a 12 mile run again kind of replicating similar to my 20 mile first run in the shoe and it just felt solid again smooth stable but if I wanted to run a little bit more tempo in the shoe it didn't feel like it was you know it felt awkward to do and it absolutely is in the wheelhouse to be able to do that in the shoe it feels like a fantastic shoe to run long in I think if I was doing a marathon I really want to cruise in a shoe I really kind of valued the comfort and protection but also still having something quite nice and enjoyable in that ride and this is a shoe I think can offer that and felt for me kind of feels like it can deliver that um, in terms of kind of durability what I'm seeing in terms of the outsole grip I mean it's been generally fine I've been mainly in kind of dry conditions no kind of rainy conditions but there's a fair amount of rubber here you know it's it's not fully encased in rubber. There is some exposed areas. I'm ans I am seeing a little bit of wear in the inside here of the outsole where that kind of exposed foam is, but there's a good level of rubber in those kind of focused areas of the outsole. So I think, you know, it is going to be a shoe that you can run long in and it's going to give you good life. And I feel confident that the outsole grip is going to be very solid overall. And I've had kind of no issues on that side of things. So for me, Real kind of positive experience from the Hocker Sky Relax in general. I've had a good run every time I've put it on. I've enjoyed putting it on. You know, it's not, you know, I've not had that feeling where like, oh, I've got to go um, out and run in this shoe. It's a shoe that I've put on. I know that it feels comfortable. I know that it's going to give me that protection and that kind of side, that softer, plush feeling that I like over those longer runs, but not feeling overly plush because you've got that EVA foam in there as well too. And if I wanted to run a little bit quicker in it, I have felt I've been able to do that as well. So I've run over 60k in the Hoka Skyward X. I've been using it during the last few weeks of my marathon training, so high mileage weeks. I've done a long run in the shoe of 15 miles, done a few easy runs, and then a progression run today where I move from easy to around my marathon pace by the end, around 3 minutes 30 per kilometer pace at the end of the run today. All in all, I liked it a lot more than I expected. Like when it came in, it just seemed so big and heavy. I'm not a huge fan of very big shoes in general. I find that once they get to a certain size, they're just, you know, no matter how fun and bouncy they are, it's just, it's just a bit too much for me to use for regular running. And I've had that with lots of shoes that I do think are really good, but probably not quite to my taste. I still think that's a bit the case with the Skyward X. It's not a shoe that I'd rush out and grab for myself, but I do think loads of people are going to like the shoe a lot and it does deliver on what it sets out to. It is a very bouncy and comfortable and fun shoe to use for easy and long runs and daily training training in general. It's also surprisingly stable. There's a lot going on in the back of the shoe to try and stabilize it with this heel clip and the way you sit within the foam, and it has worked. I think I didn't have any problems with stability. It actually wasn't something that I really thought about at all in the shoe, even when running on cambered roads, run along some trails in this shoe as well, and it's just felt pretty comfortable and solid and reliable throughout. In all my runs, I'd say that I've been running at a pace that's a little bit quicker than I expected when I'm in the shoe, which is you know a hallmark of lots of plated shoes, but it's a bit more surprising with this shoe because it is so big, and it does feel big on the foot, but in the long run I did in it, the 15 mile, I think the mo first, most of the first I was downhill obviously just pounding down hills in a shoe like this is very fast and very easy to do but then most of the second half was uphill and actually it was felt a lot lighter and smoother and smaller on my foot than I expected I did, I did that whole run at a faster pace than I expected or was really intending to do I was just going to run on effort and heart rate and those were both nice and low throughout the run and it still came out at a decent pace has happened in all the easy runs in the shoe really it just feels quite easy to cruise along with this for a shoe at a slightly above your expected pace like, there's not really any benefit to that I don't think you know like if you're gonna go out for an easy run I don't really care about the pace but it just shows you that there is a little bit of efficiency to this convex 
carbon plate and the foams going on in there that do deliver a bouncy ride that you know does deliver those little savings of effort that you have with carbon shoes in general there is an upper limit to how fast i think you can run in this shoe though i just don't think it's as versatile as some other super trainers like i wouldn't want to take this down the track and do fast reps in it at the end of the run today running kind of the last few k at around 340 330 a k pace it, it's just a bit too big for it like you can do it and it wasn't like i was you know my effort was much higher than normal to lift this big shoe up it still felt fairly smooth you certainly get the bounce there but just just felt a bit too big and heavy for me for that kind of running like it's about 320 grams in my size now it's not heavy given how big it is but it is a lot heavier than other super trainers something like the super blast is 250 grams in my size for example so and i just prefer that lighter feel to a shoe even though you know the trade-off here is you get loads of bounce because it is such a big shoe i just would rather have the smaller shoe i don't think i'm engaging the full level of the foam here as a high cadence runner who's not that heavy maybe i'm not really sinking in enough to get as much out of it as some others might i think i could enjoy this exact midsole setup with maybe 10 millimeters less stack and i probably enjoy a little bit more and maybe that's what we'll see with something like the uh, hoka mac x2 or something like that coming later this year because i do think the way that the uh, eva foam now acts as the kind of stabilizing frame allows you to get a bit more piva foam into the shoe and give you that deeper bouncy feeling that you get with the skull decks i didn't really feel so much with the mac x when i was running in that shoe so all in all, it's been a pretty fun run test, and the shoe has won me over a fair bit, more than I expected. It's, it is fun to run around in. It is bouncy. It does save the legs well. I used it in, like I say, in high mileage weeks of marathon training. Legs felt very fresh the next day. It's pretty stable, such a big shoe, and all around I think it's a successful shoe that does deliver what it wants to, which is a really cushioned feel for cruising around easy runs, and I think a lot of people will enjoy it. It's still just a bit too big for my taste, though. I just don't think I ever need a shoe this big. Now in testing, I've logged around 30 Ks in these shoes, including one longer run for around 90 minutes on feet, one very slow four miler and one 10 K. Again, mainly easy, but with a few faster segments thrown in. Most of that has been on road, some on hard packed river paths. Now, sometimes you can put on shoes and they're a bit neutral, a bit unremarkable, a bit vanilla. They're kind of okay, pretty good. Not much to say about them. The Hoka Skyward X or anything, but this was one of those shoes that I knew would get a lot of hype, so I wanted to run blind in it for a bit without kind of swallowing down the marketing blurb. I just wanted to get an untainted feel for what I think this shoe is good at and what it will be for. And I have to confess, this shoe has me somewhat baffled. For me, it's a bit Jekyll and Hyde here. On my first run, in the first two miles, I don't think I've ever run in a shoe that's less stable, more soft, squidgy, and just really odd. I almost wanted to turn around and go back and take it off. It's big, but it doesn't necessarily feel sort of really heavy on the foot. There's a lot going on, but I don't find it over bulky like some shoes. The midsole and footbed is really, really soft, and there's cradle comfort to that. Now, if you want to feel none of the road, this shoe is for you for sure. But at the same time, in those early miles of each run that I did, I found that the start outs felt like you were running on sand. Not just the work that you had to do to drag your feet out of the softness, but also the lack of control that I got in each step. There's almost like a running in period each time you head back out in the shoe. And for large parts of my test runs, I feel like this shoe was kind of controlling me rather than I was controlling the shoe. At least kind of, unless you really work on your foot placement, I often felt like the springy kind of midsole had a mind of its own. It was sort of firing my feet off on toe off in different directions. But then at times when I concentrated on sort of punching my foot into the ground and controlling the landings, I felt there was really good energy coming back from the midsole. Sometimes I felt like this shoe really just wanted to go a bit faster. And then times when I did that, I just then felt it was too soft and there was too much shoe for that. It didn't really sort of fire up as I'd wanted to. On my slower efforts, at times I felt the landings were well protected. At others, I felt like the shoes were all over the place. And my overriding sensation was that I was crying out for more consistency out of this shoe. And no matter how I ran, kind of fast, slow, mid to forefoot or further back on my heels, I just couldn't get that consistency for long periods. At times it reminded me a bit of those sort of old Nike Joyride shoes underfoot, like you're clawing in the sand. Other times I felt the midsole engaged faster with more punch. Uh, it performed like a good kind of lively daily trainer sometimes, but I was never entirely sure what I'd get. Okay, so my verdict on the Skyward X is that I think Hocker's on a bit of a roll this year in terms of its launches. I think if you look at things like the Cielo X1, the Max 6 that we've tested recently, and now the Skyward X, it's really put out some strong road running shoes. And I think with the Skyward X, while it is a new line, it's definitely convinced me a little bit more about that kind of category of max cushion, super trainer, a shoe ultimately that you can use for long runs, you can get that comfort protection over long runs, but you do have the scope to use that shoe for a mixture of runs as well. 
namely something that is a little bit more up tempo and i do think you get that here in the skyward x yes it is heavy but i don't think it's the kind of weight that has really bothered me in my runs and i think it's real testament to what's happening here and what hocker has done in this midsole and managed to deliver here now if i'm looking at other max cushion super trainers where i think this possibly sits now i haven't run in a super blast i think you'd probably put the super blast above this purely on the weight terms um, but I think the Skyblex definitely is up there in terms of those kind of top performing um, Max Cushion Super Trainers. So I think if you are looking for a comfortable long run shoe, but also a long run shoe that you can run slightly more up tempo in and you do get that nice kind of faster feeling in it, barring kind of speed work, then I do think absolutely the um, Skyblex can do that. It's not cheap, it's 185 pounds, even more expensive in the US as well too. But ultimately, if you are not looking at a carbon plate racer or a, or a marathon shoe or a long run shoe, that's maybe, you know, a little bit more um, unstable. This is definitely a more stable kind of long run shoe, but also a long run shoe that I do think will give you something that feels nice, enjoyable, lively and bouncy, but also protective as well in good amount. So verdict on the Hoka Skyward X. Uh, it's always going to have two different verdicts here because of the way the pricing is. It's a very strange disparity in pricing. Um, for the one, most of the time recently, the UK has been getting hammered on price differences. But like all the shoes I've compared this to in the UK, the Skyward X is probably a little bit cheaper than them. And then in the US, it's a little bit more expensive than them. So that really you know, changes up how I'd compare them. But I do think this is one of the better big cushion super trainers. I feel it has a more defined role as a easy and daily training run shoe so some of the others that you could compare to so the new balance sc trainer v2 for example i didn't really like that shoe that much but that was partly because it was coming in as a shoe that was meant to be really versatile and have a bit of speed to it and actually i just felt very sluggish in that shoe and i feel a bit more poppy and sprightly in the skyward x even though it's a bigger heavier shoe and i prefer using it so also i've never really viewed this as in any way a speed shoe so i guess that helps its case and it's just the way i viewed it but all around i think it's a better shoe than the new balance and other you know kind of big cushion super trainers i like this more than the socket Convara pro for example and the on cloud monster hyper if we're even classing that as a super trainer at all uh, this does deliver a fun ride and i think that what this shoe is all about it's all about fun and energy saving and protection and comfort on long runs and easy runs and it does deliver all those things it's not really a versatile shoe at all though and there are certainly super trainers that are more versatile like you're looking at things like socket endorphin speed 4, which is you know, much less cushioned and firmer but still pretty comfortable for easy runs cheaper much quicker much more lively for fast runs or even races and then there's the Attic Super Blast, which is the big shoe to compare to this, I think, almost because, uh, you know, it's similarly big. It doesn't have a plate in it, but it has a big old wedge of great foam in there, and it's a lot lighter. It's a bit stiffer than this shoe as well, which is, well, it felt a bit stiffer to me as well when I ran them at the same time. I think that's surprising because this has the plate in it and the Super Blast doesn't, but Super Blast certainly feels a bit more geared up for fast running. Get a bit more bounce and comfort from the Skyward X, I'd say, though, and I do think if you're sticking it in a rotation much more as a cushion shoe, then the Skyward X is probably a little bit more suited to that than the Super Blast, but the Super Blast is a much more versatile shoe and a much lighter shoe all round and like i say cheaper in the us although slightly more expensive in the uk so uh, looking at the rest of hoka's range obviously i think this is a good addition because i found with the mac x it never felt that different to the mac 6 or mac 5 for me like it didn't really deliver much of a bouncy ride it was a pretty solid plated shoe for easy runs but i would prefer to use this in the normal mac because it was cheaper lighter and had a similar amount of versatility this is a very different shoe this is a much more cushioned shoe that's much bouncier and, a, and therefore is a good different option in Hoka's range of shoes so it is a very different shoe to the Mac and actually the Mac X as well it's much bouncier much bigger I did run in the Skyward X and the Mac X at the same time and it's it's quite difficult to do because you're so much higher in this shoe and it feels much softer so yeah it's a nice addition to the range and it's a huge success compared to when Hoka first tried this style of shoe with the Bondi X which was a really not a very good shoe at all I think firm no fun not bouncy expensive plate in there for no real purpose this feels like a shoe that has a purpose a lot of people really like it like i say it's not quite to my taste it's not a shoe that i'd go and stick in my rotation myself it's just a bit too big and hefty but it's a bit like the prime x as well actually as well the prime x2 uh strung but i think a bit more stable a bit more accessible and a bit more kind of useful for general running the, the prime x is more versatile has definitely more speed in it than the scarred x although i still don't think that's a, an amazingly fast shoe but it's, it's a bit more awkwardly placed the prime x because it is build as almost a racing option still with all the tech and stuff going on the Skyward X was much more squarely placed as a daily trainer a cushion shoe and that I think suits both of those shoes better and I think the Skyward X will work for more people because it is a pretty stable design and a comfort first design that yeah is good fun so yeah all in all I had a lot of fun running in the shoe more than I expected uh, it's still not one I'll pick up myself but if you are after that very cushioned disconnected running where you barely feel the ground at all and get a nice bit of bounce but in a shoe that moves surprisingly quickly for all that foam in the midsole Skyward X does do it 
you have to pay a lot of money for it. Verdict then, and in all honesty, I don't think I've ever been this confused by a shoe. For half a mile, I'd love it. For half a mile, I kind of wouldn't. At times, I found myself thinking it could be a really good option to take on a 50-mile Comrades Ultra because of the protection, because of that little bit of energy. Then 20 strides later, my feet would be wobbling wildly all over the place on the massive soft stack, and I'd think I was mad for even considering it. After 30 k's, I still can't quite get my head around what this shoe is for. It's got big, soft, easy cruiser written all over it but none of the kind of reliable stability you usually expect with those kind of shoes. The midsole also has energy to it, but overall I'd say the shoe's probably a bit too big and heavy and bulky to really be a top choice for faster efforts. I'd describe it also as a bit wild. I've been trying to think of a good analogy. It's To me it's like a big old station wagon with an F1 engine and super sensitive kind of power steering. Do I like it? I don't really think it's my kind of shoe. Who's it for? Well, I think if you like your ride really, really soft, this is about the softest trampolini shoe I think I've ever run in, and I think you'll love it. This is a shoe that completely removes the road from the equation, but if you need stability, I'd say steer clear. Okay, so there you have it. That is our multi-tester take on the Hocker Skyward X. And don't worry, we do have some comparison videos with this shoe as well too. But if there's any particular shoes you want to see this compared to, or any questions you have about the shoe, do let us know in the comments. As always, like and subscribe, hit that little bell to find out about our latest videos, and yeah, we'll see you for the next run test video.